The oceans are where all life on Earth began. For years, though, humanity has just used them as a rubbish bin. We've all seen the impact of plastics, and thankfully, we're beginning to make changes to address that problem. But there are complex issues beneath the surface that can feel almost too daunting to tackle. However, pioneering researchers are working right now to ensure a healthy future for our oceans. AXA are supporting researchers who are expanding the boundaries of our knowledge, and it's incredible. In this film, we'll be exploring the potential we all have to play a part in saving the oceans. But before that, let's have a look at one more entrancing fish. Now, cut to me talking to a real-life marine expert. My name is Cosima Porteus. I'm a researcher at the University of Exeter, and I study how fish sense their environment and how they respond to environmental change. How's AXA helping research that important work? AXA has funded my work to look at the effects of ocean acidification on economically important fish species. The publicity that's been done around single-use plastic certainly sort of permeated our consciousness, yeah. and we're now trying to reduce that. But is acidification a bigger underlying problem? Yes, it's something we can't see. And the oceans are doing us a huge favour. They're absorbing about 25% of the carbon dioxide in our atmosphere. But in the process, the oceans are becoming more acidic, and what we're finding is that it's affecting the behaviour of fish. How does their behaviour change? Well, I found that their sense of smell is being affected. If you're going diving or snorkeling and visibility is quite poor, it's similar for a fish, and they can use their sense of smell to find mates, find food, avoid predators, um, and therefore, if their sense of smell is affected, their lives are affected as well. It's a much wider issue than fish not being able to smell properly. Yes. It's about food security, isn't it? And, yeah. and about all sorts of sort of wider ethical issues. Exactly. It's just another stressor on top of fish being overfished and having to deal with an increase in temperature. And AXA goes beyond just supporting us financially. Uh, it's allowed me and other researchers to uh, tell the public about our work and also has put us in contact with charities and members of parliament to talk to them about these issues. To enable fish to, to smell properly, yeah. we just need to try and reduce our CO2 That's sort of right. footprint. I'm Emily Penn and I'm working on solving the ocean plastic pollution crisis. What's your engagement with the ocean? I mean, obviously, you're, you're an explorer, but it has a, there is a message behind what you do. I get to spend my life at sea, but it's actually about the plastic issue. And so what I'm doing now is taking other people out there so they can have the same experience firsthand, but also do the important scientific work alongside it that we need to properly understand both the impacts and where the solutions lie in solving the problem. So what would you say are sort of immediate solutions that you, you've come across? The more time I spend at sea, the more I realise how much the solutions start on land. Yes, because a lot of the time I think it's out of sight, out of mind. What we talk about a lot now is actually microplastics. So all of the plastic that's leaving land, 8 million tonnes a year, fragments. And the UV rays from the sun cause those bigger bits of plastic to photodegrade, to break down into what we then call microplastics. And they're now forming a soup over the surface of our ocean. How can we stop the toxic soup? Really, our opportunity right now is on land, at the source. Don't get it in the water. Exactly. Better still, stop using it. And you're setting off on a big new mission. So this next big project is about solutions-based science. Oh, my <laughs> God. Let's take it by this. <laughs> oh, that was... So yes, so solutions-focused science. We all know there's a problem. We need to understand better what the problem is. The fact that the plastic is so small and that it's sinking. And then building an army of people who've had this experience. Oh, oh here we go again. Now, this beauty, as I've been up top, has been badgering me for food. <laughs> so beautiful. Well, if you ever want anyone to join the army or to be on one of your boats, seasick as I get, I'd be delighted. Anything I can do to help change. Yeah, that's great news, yeah. I'm Helen Ann Smith, I'm a journalist at Sky News and I was part of the original Sky Ocean Rescue team. So what was the inciting incident? What, what prompted this extraordinary campaign? We went to Bermuda. When we were there, we were sort of like, God, there's, 
there really is a lot of plastic uh, on the beaches here. It's just shocking, this paradise island. It, you? you absolutely can't ignore it. I've stood in a room where the entire space was covered with plastic that had been taken out the stomach of a whale. So what kind of impact has the campaign had? And within a year, the Scotland said they were going to introduce bottle deposit schemes, which is a scheme where you take your bottle back to where you got it. Every individual person can make such a massive difference by making what is really small choices. You know what, buy a reusable water bottle. Try and choose fresh food that's kind of packaged in sort of paper rather than plastic. And you know what, consumers need to put pressure on politicians and on companies. You know, you need to write to your MP and you need to say, I care about this, you need to do something about it. And it's important, much as we talk about the power of the consumer and how we can change the world, we can also destroy the world. For some reason, because it's this big, blue, deep thing that we can't see very much, people have this mental block over the fact that we're doing such damage to it. You know, Sky Ocean Rescue, it has, I hope, really had an impact in making people think about the way that they use this material and trying to think about it as a permanent material and not a throwaway material. You always needed a campaign like this to focus minds yeah. on, on, on a simple fix that can be done domestically. I think people do want to do the right thing, ultimately, and I hope that this will continue to snowball. I genuinely think that people want to do good. I mean, climate change is sort of... It's very easy to think, we're just heading towards Armageddon, there's yeah. nothing I can do as an individual, it's doomed, everything's... it's over. But presumably your work is leading you to a positive conclusion or that, that there is some hope. We're not there yet and we can do something about it. AXA Research Fund is creating a community of researchers and we have a chance to interact and tell other people about it. For better or worse, human beings yeah. have ended up as the sort of custodians of nature. That's right, yes. And there's an ethical dimension, isn't there, about making sure that life began in the ocean. We should at least yes. try and allow that to continue. Exactly. Is it too late? I don't think so. <laughs> Thank God. We just need to act now. We're beginning a journey to save life on this incredible planet. I've felt that it might be too late to redress the balance, that maybe we've pushed things beyond the point of no return. But I've learned today that with the innovations and science made possible by AXA-funded research, we can still alter this course. Let's be brave enough to push for change from our politicians, our corporations and ourselves. If we decide to take action, then anything is possible. To build a better future, we need to speak up now. And if we do, we'll step into a future that's better for all of us.